A closer angle picks up the gang as they quickly bolt out of the car door. The notorious garbage truck, the exterminator's big lumbering co-star in the film, requires a third camera angle. It will provide a dramatic glimpse of the bad guys as the truck plows toward them. Finally, a high-angle camera is used to show the size of the warehouse to make it look and feel like a battlefield. In addition to planning the photographic coverage of the scene, the director also must make sure the screen direction and the eye lines are working. In order for the film to cut together properly, each actor must be looking and moving in exactly the right direction. The scene also is the responsibility of weapons armor Danny Kershoff and his crew, who not only prepare the firearms, but they must also show the actors how to handle the kind of weapons they're not likely to find at a local firing range. A bazooka, for example. The bazooka explosions are created by a small black gunpowder bomb detonated by a battery-powered device in the handle of the weapon. The actors are given a full rehearsal with their weapons in order to synchronize their movements. Finally, the scene is shot with the bazookas and the automatic rifles, resulting in a hail of gunfire. The final stage of the battle scene is to prepare the truck for its performance as a battering ram. First, a smoky atmosphere is created for the scene, and then it's off to the races. Explosions are detonated all around the truck. And then the garbage truck is driven by stunt driver Billy and Agnes through a row of cars toward the film camera. When the scene is completed, the crew rushes in with fire extinguishers to douse the flames. It's been a full day for Mark Buntsman and his crew. Now let's finally have a look at how these lengthy preparations come together in the final version of the battle scene in Exterminator 2.
in a film like Exterminator 2, chock full of action and special effects, movie audiences tend to take for granted how the actors feel when the script calls for them to strangle someone to death or when they're on the screen carrying guns. For example, in this scene when Exterminator Johnny Long loses his best friend Bee Gee in a hail of gunfire. It's actor Mario Van Peebles up there on the screen firing away with an Uzi machine gun and wearing a grin as wide as a Cheshire cat. That's not a feeling many of us experience in our everyday lives, but for the actor to make us believe it, he must feel it himself. What scared me most about doing the role was not just doing the role, but getting into it and enjoying it. I mean, that gun, uh, the, the Uzi that I had when I shot BG on the truck uh, and playing X, there was a sense of power and it became a part of me and I just... I mean, I did things that I, you know, I was like, whoa, Mario, that's you. It reminded me of playing football and hitting guys and saying, ugh, this feels good, I like it. <laughs> In fact, the camaraderie between Mario and the actors who play the members of his gang was still there long after filming had been completed. I was at a club uh, and uh, got into a fight. And one of the guys uh, from Exterminator was there, the guy that was a roller skater, and uh, immediately responded, just like my right-hand man in X. And exterminate. I mean, we immediately, we would go around and would respond to each other like the gang. For Robert Ginty, the reality of the character he plays is no less personal. So I really have a violent instinct in me. I mean, it would be very hard to, uh, as a human being, I could never do what I do as an actor. But maybe there's obviously a part of me that uh, is capable of that, and I acted out as, a, as an actor. Though the actors on Exterminator 2 can sometimes reach the boiling point, it's nothing like the feeling on the set when it comes time to perform the extremely dangerous fire stunts. Stunt coordinator Ted Duncan is in charge, and he's one of the best in the business. But this particular fire stunt is one which even Ted Duncan has never attempted before. His job is to have a record five men burning in a single scene. He must not only observe traditional safety precautions, but must carefully plan how the five men can move freely and dramatically without endangering one another. Exterminator 2's director has tremendous respect for what Ted Duncan brings to a film. He knows how to draw that very fine line between really being safe and protecting the stuntmen and the other people on the set and also putting the shot together in a way that really sells it dramatically. The first step is to shoot Robert Ginty firing the notorious flamethrower high above the set where the stuntmen will be burned. Then there is a rehearsal of the five men who will perform the stunt. Under Ted's watchful eye, the guys walk in, and there is a simulation first of the application of the non-flammable gelatin, and then of the flames being ignited. Finally, just like the actors in the film, the stunt men must rehearse their movements very carefully. They must know precisely where they are going. One mistake, and there could be a serious injury. Now it's for real. To build the scene, a barrel filled with water, which will appear to be gasoline in the film, is slowly lowered over the area where the stuntmen will be burned. And after a final warning by assistant director Kelly Van Horn, and a final look by director Mark Bunsman, the stuntmen are costumed in their fireproof asbestos clothing, and every inch of their exposed skin is coated with a clear, non-flammable gelatin. The gelatin must be applied with the utmost care and precision. It is the only thing that protects these men from serious injury. There is no margin for error. One mistake could be fatal. New York firemen and paramedics are standing by just in case something goes wrong. And there is one final concern which Ted Duncan must leave to his stuntmen. Is while you're breathing, you're sitting here, got to hold your breath, get into the wind, and take your breath, and then let it out while the fire is blowing away from you. If you turn and it whips around in front of you, and you get a, a, a face full of fire, and then you got it in your lungs when it sears the lungs. Finally, the torches are ignited, and as the entire crew holds their breath, Ted Duncan gives the signal to light the bodies. The men are on fire. A cue is quickly given to an operator of the high-speed camera, which will give the scene a devastating slow-motion effect. The men begin to stagger, careful not to collide into one another, searching for their prearranged destinations where the flames are extinguished. The stunt has been a success, and nobody is more relieved than stunt coordinator Ted Duncan. Yeah, we all have to have a nice timing. Nobody else goes. Everybody stayed in camera. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Director Mark Bunsman may have had a few anxious moments himself, but he also is very pleased at the result. They stayed out here for a real long time, played to all the cameras. 
you've just seen how one of Hollywood's most dangerous stunts is done. Now, let's have a look at how it appears in the final version of Exterminator 2.